From Washington, this is VOA News. U.S. lawmakers prepare to release a report on allegations of CIA torture methods against terrorist suspects. And Sierra Leone overtakes Liberia in the number of cases of the, of the Ebola virus. I'm Michael Lippin. The U.S. Senate is preparing to release a long-awaited report on CIA interrogation methods for terror suspects since the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks on the United States. The report, due to be released on Tuesday, will be the first public documentation of the CIA's use of alleged torture against al-Qaeda suspects detained in the U.S.-led War on Terror. U.S. officials have expressed concern that the report could incite violence against U.S. interests around the world. A White House spokesman on Monday said American embassies and other U.S. facilities abroad are bracing for possible security threats. American field commanders also have been warned that they should take appropriate measures to protect overseas troops and bases. Media reports say the 480-page document details extreme interrogation techniques such as sleep deprivation and waterboarding, which simulates drowning. The World Health Organization says new cases of the Ebola virus continue to grow in West Africa, with Sierra Leone overtaking Liberia as the country with the highest number of cases. Data published on Monday by the, by the WHO show that Sierra Leone has recorded 7,798 cases of the virus and indicate that the disease is now spreading fastest in that country. Infection rates for Ebola are decreasing in Liberia, which now has just over 7,700 cases. Liberia still has more Ebola deaths than any other country. You're listening to VOA News. Typhoon Hagupit has been downgraded to a tropical storm as it dumps heavy rain across the central Philippines. Authorities say the cyclone has killed at least 23 people since it started hitting the country over the weekend. VOA's Brian Padden reports from the Philippine island of Cebu, where the cleanup and relief effort is underway. In Cebu City, life returned to normal Monday. Hagupit moved past this region of the central Philippines and there have been no reports of significant flooding or wind damage. The city central school, which was converted into an evacuation shelter during the storm, is being cleaned. School principal Lira Ilciaga says classes for the more than 4,000 students will resume very soon. No damages was done by Typhoon Ruby and we're very happy and we thank the Lord that for sparing us against Typhoon Ruby. This storm did not produce the kind of massive ocean surges and wind damage as last year's super typhoon Haiyan that killed more than 7,000 people. Some areas in northern Cebu and in the eastern Philippines were hit hard by the storm. There are reports that some houses and power lines were torn down by the strong winds. The Red Cross has dispatched assessment teams to these areas. Brian Patton, VOA News, Cebu. Britain's Prince William visited Washington for the first time on Monday with the future King of England calling for a crackdown on the illegal trade in world wildlife. Prince William met with U.S. President Barack Obama at the White House, where they talked about criminality involved in the wildlife trade. The prince then delivered a speech on the issue at a World Bank conference. Prince William said that Britain's United for Wildlife charity, which he founded with his wife Kate and brother Prince Harry, is spearheading a new examination of the transport industry from airlines to shipping lines to try to break the link between suppliers of contraband wildlife and consumers. The United States has unveiled new steps to curb profiling of criminal suspects by federal law enforcement officials. 
The new guidelines issued on Monday expand the current ban on the use of race and ethnicity in pinpointing suspects to also prohibit profiling by national origin, gender, gender identity, religion, and sexual orientation. The practical effect of the new restrictions was not immediately clear, however, since they only apply to U.S. government law enforcement agencies, not to the more than 12,000 local state police departments in the, in the U.S. that have the most contact with people in everyday situations. Well, I'll be back in one hour for another check of the international headlines. I'm Michael Lippin in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.